Hello there, this is Roberto Matthews with another quick tip. Today we're going to talk about animation. Basically, smill animations, which is a bit different than CSS animations, but I prefer them sometimes for a cool reason, and that is being able to sequence them, being able to do better timing, timing using actual time rather than percentages, which is pretty cool. So let's just talk about how animations work. Here, as you can see, I have a circle, a square, a triangle, and I have a little speech bubble with some text. The speech bubble is path, and the text is obviously text. Now, we're going to leave this and this for a later uh, video on advanced animation. So for now, we're just going to talk about the circle and the rectangle. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and comment these out for now so that they're out of our way. Okay, and let's talk about what we can do with the circle and with the rectangle. Now, there's two ways to do animation. You can either, instead of doing this uh, terminator right here, you can actually terminate with circle like this and put the animation inside here. So if we do animate, and I have a, um, a uh, script that allows me to put a little bit of a of the text in there and so we can do the animate and this is a standard animation script here basically here's your animate command then we're gonna whatever we're going to animate so for example we can animate each one of these we can animate this the center X or the center Y we can animate this R we can animate the fill we can put some opacity in there animate the opacity there's basically almost no limit to what we can uh, change here. We're telling it when we want to begin. We're telling it what the duration of our animation is going to be. And here we have values. Now values, we're going to change this to to or from um, because uh, values is a little bit more advanced. So we're just going to change this to to. Now the fill is comparable to the animation um, ending. Normally an animation you would do uh, forwards and that ends it where you want it to end, it freezes it where it ends. This fill is comparable to that and you would put here freeze if you want it to end at that point. So let's just go ahead and fill out some of these. So for now we're just going to move it down a few pixels. So we're going to actually change this, the Y axis here. So we're going to do the attribute name of CY. We're going to begin it immediately. So we're going to put here zero seconds. We're going to do this over a three second period. And right now the CY is at 10, so let's move it down, uh, let's say 75 pixels. And there you have it. It's moving down, and it, when it ends, when the animation ends, it ends and it goes right back to where it began. So we'll put here freeze, and then we have here it moving down and freezing right there. Okay? So. We can do the same thing with this rectangle, but instead of having it terminate and then put the animation inside, we can actually refer to this rectangle. And this works because we can put all our animations together or we can uh, better uh, figure out where our animations are you know, for um, organizational situations. So for example, we can put here that the ID now, in order for this to not keep doing, not keep recording over and over and over again, we're going to go ahead and change our app so that we can actually do a, a start and an end. Because otherwise, it's going to, no matter what I type here, if I type an A, it's going to reanimate 50 times, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to move this to a new program, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so here we are. And we're using um, W3 schools. And the reason I like this is because of the bright interface. And, I, of course, you can change this to dark also. But I also like this because I have a run button here. So I can do all these edits. And it won't continue running over and over and over again. Okay, so we're, we were here at the animate attribute. Correct? And so now, instead of animating using the complete tag like this, we can use a terminated tag by just adding... And ID. Now we can do that with the completed tag also, 
but let's add an ID so let's call this my rectangle okay now if I want to refer to it um, I would say animate let's do the same thing here let's just copy and paste here okay but instead of instead of saying animate straight like this I would have to refer to this ID so to refer to an ID you just say xlink href equals and then whatever your ID is so you put your hashtag my rectangle obviously this works with classes also but you wouldn't really work on a whole bunch of classes at the same time you would usually work on one ID at a time so what we're going to do is we're going to change the um, attribute that we want is the Y again we're going to do the Y we're going to begin at zero seconds actually let's push it back let's push it back since this one starts at three seconds we can end after three seconds and so have the duration also be three seconds and that's what you would normally do on an animation correct so you would say begin three seconds duration three seconds we want to move it down to 65 okay and freeze so we run this comes down and then the next one comes down but what's awesome about uh, actually let's move this down to 75 also um, what's awesome about this is that we can actually do some sort of chaining see the chaining that we normally do here we say begin three seconds right and if I wanted to move this down to begin one second I would have to add another second to this for example if I did if I didn't want this to start until two seconds it would wait two seconds but then this one wouldn't wait until this ended I would have to do some math I would say okay instead of beginning at three seconds I would have to begin at two seconds plus three seconds which is five seconds but instead of doing that see that works good for you know these two but if I started adding more and more shapes that becomes a daunting task so instead of doing that we can give this animation an ID so let's give this animation a simple ID of one okay now instead of saying begin at three seconds we can say begin when one ends okay so when one ends then we're gonna start this so if we run this and we wait to two seconds it's gonna wait until it ends and then start so we can do anything we can say we're gonna begin this at uh, at one second or 0.5 seconds and it doesn't matter when it starts as soon as it ends we can have this end we can also do complicated things like say when this ends but we also want to wait uh, 1.5 seconds okay so we want it we want it to end but then wait another five 1.5 seconds to start so that's kind of how you would do that now the disadvantage to using animate is that you can only do one attribute at a time so if I wanted to chain attributes for example if I wanted to say that this animation were to go down and then to the right I would have to do another animation tag I can't do two animations on one tag so I would say copy here and then I would say um, my ID for this animation is 2 and so I would say the animation is going to be CX. I want to start after one ends. And I want to say three seconds. And I'm going to go to the right to 75. Okay? And freeze. Now what I can do is, since this is going to be the first one, and then this is going to be the next one, we can say when two ends, so now I don't have to do any complicated math. I can just say when two ends, that's when I want my, my rectangle to move. And not only do I want it to move down, I want it to move back up. So I can say copy, paste right here. And so my rectangle, I'll say Y when, so now I want this to end when this ends. 
So we're going to give this one an ID. So let's give this one an ID of 3 because that's the third animation, right? So, and of course you can name these animations anything you'd like. So I want this animation to be number 3. And then after 3 is ending, I'd like this one to start. So let's say 3 end. I want the duration to be 3. And I want it to move back up. So we're going to say to 50. Okay, and then freeze. So let's run this. It's going to go down first. Then to the right. Then this is going to... There you go. So now you can see how we can sequence animations very easily using SMIL or SMIL for SVG animation. On the next video, I'm going to show you how we can do some uh, advanced animation. For example, we can draw some text on our little thing that we have here. Okay? Have a wonderful day.